My name's Katie and welcome to my channel. In this video today I'm going to talk about what I think is the one biggest drawback of keeping African cichlids. In general these fish are amazing fish. I think that they're almost the perfect fish because they're really hardy, they're easy to breed, they look beautiful as well and it's super simple to get the water parameters how they like it. However, the one thing that is the most annoying thing or the worst thing I would say about these fish is the fact that they can be quite aggressive. So in this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about aggression with African cichlids and what I do to manage it in my six foot Lake Malawi tank that I've got here. In this tank here, as you can see, I've got a mixture of African cichlids. I've got haps, peacocks and embuna. And in particular, it has been the peacocks that have had the most aggression, if actually the only aggression in this tank has been peacock cichlids towards other peacock cichlids. And aggression with African cichlids is kind of like a silent killer, I would say, because oftentimes if you're around and you're looking at the tank, you won't really see that much aggression. But what you may see if you're having issues with aggression in your tank is you'll see one fish that is sitting up behind the filter or in a corner of the tank and it might be breathing really heavily, so gasping rapidly, and it might also be showing a lot of gill movement as well because it's been exhausted from being chased around. And you might start to notice that its fins start to get quite a bit tattered as well, and it's reluctant to come out of the corner. Okay, this is Layla, and she apparently wants to be a part of the video. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put her on me so she doesn't scream. Okay. So what you might notice is that you have a fish that's on its own and it's reluctant to swim about. And if you do look for long enough, you might sometimes see the culprit actually go up towards it and chase it around. Now, the reason that aggression can be a bit of a silent killer is because a lot of the time what happens is the fish gets stressed out, its immune system gets worn down, and then any type of disease or anything that was bad that's in your tank can then take a hold more easily on that tank when it's stressed out. Um, more easily on that fish rather when it's feeling stressed out and so it can end up dying from secondary reasons even though aggression was the primary reason for the stress of the fish or other times what you might find too is that it just gets bullied so badly and its fins get torn apart and that as well can take a bit of a toll on the fish to the point that it passes away and you just end up finding a dead fish in your tank and you don't know why it's happened if you're not paying really close attention so when it comes to actually mitigating aggression, there's a few different things that you want to do. Having lots of fish in your tank can help because then it means that it can disperse the aggression, but that doesn't always help because sometimes you will get one fish that will relentlessly attack the other one. The other thing that can help too is having plenty of hiding spots. So it helps having lots of rocks and stuff and areas that they can get out of each other's sight to diffuse the aggression. But really the main thing in my opinion that helps to stop aggression is having a tank that's big enough. So a lot of the time the problems that I hear are in tanks that are around 90 gallons, which is about half the size of this. This is about 180 gallons and it's a six foot long tank. And I really think that for keeping a colony of African cichlids where you've got like 25 to 30, like what I've got, you're gonna to wanna to have a six foot tank. I think that a four foot tank can sometimes be okay for some of the species of embuna, but in general, if you wanna keep a mixed tank like this with peacocks, haps and embuna, and have relatively few issues with aggression, then you wanna have a tank that's long enough. The other thing that I've noticed helps with aggression too is making sure that you feed them enough. So even when I go away, I set up a little automatic feeder for my fish because I notice that if there ends up being not enough resources, so they feel like they've got to compete over food, then they start to get a little bit more aggressive to one another. I actually colour feed these fish. So the food that I give them will show you. It's called Absolute Colour. So this is it here. And it is only available in Australia, I think, but there's other foods that are available elsewhere, like white crane, I think is another one that I haven't personally used, but it's one that people use for their fish. Um, and basically these foods make your female fish appear male. 
And what I found is that that's actually been quite helpful for aggression because then it means that there's no females that they're trying to compete over and breed with. And what I've noticed is that I did run out of it at one point, so I didn't feed it for about three, four weeks and they started to lose some of their colours and some of the females started to look more female again. And I noticed that I had a spike in aggression around that time too, as that happened. So I do think that having either an all male tank or using a colour food um, can help. And with my colour food, I don't feed it every single day because it's not a very nutritious food. I think that the instructions are that you feed it every day for two weeks and after that you just feed it it like once or twice a week and that tends to be enough for them to maintain their really nice colors. The only thing I don't know about the food is how healthy it is for them to be um, eating it in the long term. I have heard some people just anecdotally say that it can decrease their lifespan potentially but I couldn't find any like proper research into it um, around it so I'm not too sure on that front. The other thing I will mention that can help with aggression too is getting fish that are different colours because they have a thing called conspecific aggression where the fish are aggressive to fish that look the same as them. Now someone asked me one time, well how does a fish know that another fish looks the same as it? I have no idea. I'm guessing it's just something to do with pheromones. Um, maybe they've got more similar genes or something if they're the same type of colour or they're related. But in general, so see these two sunshine peacocks, I've been pretty lucky with them, I haven't had any issues. But in general, you want them to be different colours, otherwise they will target the fish that looks the same as them. And so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to show you the fish that I had to take out because of aggression issues. And this was around the time that I stopped giving them the colour food because I ran out. And that's when I started having the problem where the dynamics started to shift in the tank a little bit as they started to change colour and some of the females started to lose that colour. And so I had one that was picked on by one of my peacock, uh, sunshine peacocks here and it was pretty bad. Like if I didn't take him out, I think he would have died. And so what I did was I separated him. I put him in a quarantine tank on his own and I've let him sit in there for about three, four weeks now and heal up and everything. And I'm gonna add him back in tonight finally. And he's got another peacock cichlid in there with him too, which is the one that I got from an auction a few weeks back that I've just had in the quarantine tank with him. And I'm gonna add those guys in together because with African cichlids too, if if you are adding new ones into the tank it's normally recommended to add more than one when you add them in just so that there's not just one fish that's new that's then at risk of being targeted and having all the attention put onto it so let's go and have a look at those fish and we'll add them in all right so welcome to my garage this is my albino ob cichlid that i got from the auction not too long ago and hiding behind the rocks is our cichlid that was being bullied originally in the tank So here the two of them are together and I'm going to add them in together. This is the guy that I took out about a month ago and he was really on the brink of death. He had had some pretty torn fins and they seem to have grown back quite well and so he's looking much much better. I think unfortunately though he was being a little bit aggressive towards the other peacock cichlid that was in there so I'm keen to get them into the big tank. The risk that he could have had was because he had some cut injuries that they could have got infected maybe and grown some fungus or something on them but he didn't have anything like that so there was no need to medicate him and I was keen to just observe him and see how he went. So what I do to add them just to help with aggression is I just pop a little bit of food in to distract them. Then I'm just going to float these guys. So. All right, I'm just gonna release them both out. And basically my plan is to just monitor how they go. The one fish I am a little bit worried about is I have this dragon blood peacock cichlid here. That's the one that I'm worried may not like this albino OB one because they're a little bit similar looking, but we'll see how we go. So you can see that his fin still hasn't completely grown back that one at the top but he's in way better shape than when I took him out and so far so good because that's the guy that was attacking him and 
he is not attacking him at the moment and showing any interest at all really so oh look there they are the two of them together so I'll give you a bit of an update on how these fish go in there. If you haven't followed me on Instagram already, my Instagram's Katie, um, Katie's underscore cichlids. And so if you follow me on there, I post a little bit more regular updates and stuff on my story and everything. Also, I do normally have lids on the tank. They're just netted um, NVS aquarium lids. And I just thought I'd let you know too that this tank looks terrible at the moment, but my goal this weekend is actually to get this fish tank uh, how I want it to be. So getting it rescaped and everything after I took it apart when I'm Removed. but I'm keen to show you this plant in particular it's really nice I've got this blue lotus plant that's been flowering which has been beautiful I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a like comment down let me know what you think as well if there's anything else that you think are drawbacks of this fish or any other tips for mitigating aggression and if you're enjoying my content I would love for you to subscribe to my channel too and I'll see you in the next video bye